Capillary Electrophoresis Electrophoresis is the movement of charged particles. It is a separation technique which relies on the differences in the mobility of different charged substances in an electric field. Separation is carried out by applying a high potential. The potential is about 10 to 30 kilovolts and it is applied to a very narrow fused silica capillary which is filled with a mobile phase. This mobile phase is a buffer. If at all we see the typical instrumentation for a capillary electrophoresis, we can see two reservoirs. These two reservoirs are filled with the buffer solutions. The levels of the buffer solutions are maintained regularly. Dipped into these reservoirs are the electrodes, one an anode and another at a cathode, both being the platinum electrodes. These electrodes are attached to a very high voltage supply. The sample reservoir where we take the analyte is interchangeable with the buffer reservoir. The typical buffer solutions are phosphate buffers, acetate, borate or even some zwitter ionic buffers can also be taken. They have different pH ranges. Coming to the most important part of the instrumentation is the capillary. This capillary is made up of a fused silica where a polyamide coating is present around the fused silica. The polyamide coating and the fused silica capillary it will be very strong and the polyamide coating will give some flexibility to the capillary. Capillary it is filled with a mobile phase or we call it as a buffer. At one end of the capillary a detector is connected through a transparent window. So the capillary is fused to this in such a way that the radiation can easily fall and the analytes can easily be detected. The typical detectors are a rapid scanning UV detector or DAD detector is very common DAD DAD detector it refers to diode array detector. Apart from rapid scanning UV detector and DAD even fluorometric, conductometric and mass spectrometric detectors are also available. So if you can see the typical structure of a capillary, the length range from 25 to 75 centimeter and the diameter is very thin. The total diameter is about 300 to 400 micrometer whereas the internal diameter is very very small. It is about 25 to 75 micrometer. So if at all, well here we can see suppose if I am holding like a capillary this is only a model. Suppose if this is a capillary, the outer diameter we can see and also an inner diameter. Inner diameter is more important. Usually for these capillaries it is like a hair thickness. Through this the buffer solution or the analyte has to enter. Now, how does the analyte get separated? How does the analyte move? Everything will be explained in the next videos but here I am giving some introduction. If this is the capillary, we can see the analyte ions and the neutral species are slowly moving. The moment will be towards cathode. The cations are coming closer to the cathode. The smaller ones are much closer, the larger ones are farther. Neutral ones usually come after the cations and the anions which are usually attracted towards the anode, they come at the later stages. The smallest anions will be the last coming analyte. Whatever analyte that is coming, it will be detected and it will be given as a graph. This graph we call it as a electrophorogram. Now in this electrophorogram we can see a migration time is present with absorbance. So it is absorbance versus migration time. The smallest and the highly charged cation will take the least migration time whereas the smallest and the highly charged anion will take much amount of time. So this is spending a lot of time in the capillary whereas the smallest and the highly charged cation will spend a least time within the capillary. Neutral species being the medieval one. A typical comparison between a chromatography and a capillary electrophoresis. 
we are aware that capillary electrophoresis is becoming much more important than the regular chromatography. It is said that uh, capillary electrophoresis is a rival for HPLC because of its uh, numerous growth. In chromatography, we generally use the terminology mobile phase or an eluent, whereas in capillary electrophoresis, we can also use a mobile phase, but it is mostly replaced by a buffer or a carrier electrolyte. Retention times are more important in chromatography, whereas migration times are more important in electrophoresis. Analyte has to be pumped. Once an analyte is taken, it has to be pumped or if it is a gas chromatography, diffusion process is carried out so that the analyte components get separated. In the case of capillary electrophoresis, power is supplied and in the presence of this power supply, slowly the ions and the neutral species will move towards the cathode due to the electroosmotic flow. Once the analyte gets separated, we get a graph where we can analyze what are the components present. In chromatography, it is called as a chromatogram, whereas in capillary electrophoresis, we call it as a electrophorogram. Previously, the buffers that we have discussed, some ranges have been given. The phosphate buffer has the least pH range from 1.1 to 3.1. Acetate buffer is in between, whereas the borate buffer is at a higher range, ranging from 8.1 to 10.1. Apart from these buffers, we said even zwitter ionic buffers can be used. One simple example I am taking is a MES. MES is a, it is a 2,4 morpholine ethane sulfonic acid. Its pH range is around 5.2 to 7.2. For a better instrumentation and depending on the experimental conditions, there are some additives into the buffer solutions. These additives could be an inorganic salt, it could be an organic solvent, a surfactant or even a cyclodextrin. Inorganic salt is added to change the protein conformations. Analytes could be proteins or many analytes can be taken. So whenever inorganic salt is added, it can change the conformations of the protein. Organic solvents are usually added to modify the electroosmotic flow. They can also increase the solute solubilities. Surfactants, these are used uh, to form micellis. Once it is added to the buffer and the analyte solution, it will form the micellis. Where the cationic ones can even reverse the change, uh, it, it can reverse the charge of the uh, capillary wall. Coming to the cyclodextrins, cyclodextrins, they provide uh, chiral selectivity. So these are about the buffer additives. How exactly the components of the analyte move towards the cathode, how they get separated, what is electroosmotic flow, all these things we will be discussing in our next video.